Uh, this conversion has taken so long to make. Hopefully with such an outdated model, this video will be a hit. Oh, Gage Workshop News. Hello, fair of the sort of blue, and welcome to my channel. And also welcome to the video that has taken me the longest to make. Before we start, let me make clear that this is not a step by step. This is not a how to do it, but more of a how I got there. If you want to attempt this conversion, this is a list of all the kits you will need to do it. Full disclosure, part of these kits were sent to me by Games Workshop free of charge over time. Thanks Games Workshop. But most of them I actually purchased myself. On top of that, I also use quite a lot of Milliput and green stuff. So let me take you into the journey of creating the most ambitious and complex conversion I've ever made. A journey of taking six different kits to make a single miniature. I've called it Azrael's Revenge, because I'm super original. Let's get cracking. Planning is everything, you know, the cut once, mess or twice thing craft people like to say, just not in that order. Once you know where you want to get, just build all the parts to the point where modifications have to be made and make yourself a cup of something strong to get some courage. I always have an emergency flask at hand, you never know when Nick Baton is going to start throwing my crack blue at you, I like to be prepared. Conversions like this one can be very scary, but in the end, the only way to approach a conversion of this magnitude is to trust in your skills and just make the first cut. Removing all the black temper iconography from such a great model is a good start, because after that, you really feel motivated to finish the conversion. Using a knife, some files and some paper makes quick work of that. Talking about removing unnecessary stuff, there are two ways of approaching a conversion with Bias Revenge. You can take the easy route and keep the base intact, or you can hate yourself and use a different model. Guess which one I picked. So, this being Azrael, what is the natural enemy of Dark Angels? That is correct, more Dark Angels, pointier ones to be precise. So I went for the pointiest one I could find, one of the possessed. Mainly because it was free, but also because it has an extremely open pose. And with some modifications to the right leg, he really looked like he's laying on the ground very naturally. The ground was a problem, you see, orcs don't wear power backpacks, so I had to be extremely generous with my chopping, but you see the end result is good, and he fits rather flush with the background. Milliput and basin paste will take it the rest of the way. The missing leg will be constructed using the top section of this model's leg and the lower leg with a hoof on it, which has a more natural looking pose. Some cutting and some pinning gets the job done and green stuff will connect everything. With the sword I had my doubts because no single sword looked just how I wanted it to look. In the end what I decided was to use the cross guard from the squad marines upgrade pack and the blade from the deathwing command squad. Constructing this Frankenstein monster of a sword was actually easy, you just need to make sure the glue is completely dry before you manipulate it. Difficult part was to remove the old cross guard from the hands, very tricky business. I ended up using a scalpel, patience, swearing, giving up and using the micro motor and precision burst from my work. The fit was fantastic at the end and some minor green stuff work afterwards will correct any small imperfection. Holy Fallen Batman, that is quite a jump, it's not really that much, but looks like a lot. All gaps are filled, the rocks are sculpted roughly with my fingers and tools, and the rock texture sculpted with the cutter once it's dry as you can see here in this dramatic recreation, because I forgot to film it. Look how I pretend to do stuff on a completely finished base. So cute. With all the boring stuff done, it's time to start sculpting. This is usually where Pete the Wargamer stops, but here in this channel we do real conversions. So it's time to mix more green stuff that you will ever need and start detailing the dead marine in the base. First, tidying up the gaping hole I had to make in his chest to accommodate the sword that's gently stabbing him, so I sculpted the armor as it were cracking open, which was quite simple, and then sculpted some generic fleshy looking stuff in the joints of the armor. Another great reason to choose possessed here. They are so fucked up that anything will do. 
Okay, all the easy stuff is done and this is where the real deal starts. We need to sculpt all the things that make Dark Angels, Dark Angels. Extremely explicit and very repetitive iconography. You can see I already started in the lower parts as well as the hair, but left the main course for the camera. I also modified the torso plate a bit so the angel fits better. The key when sculpting fine detail is layers. You need to sculpt in several layers and leave the previous one to cure. In this case I went for three, the main body, the arms and sword I will do later on top, and the wings. I just start by shaping the body, getting the contour right, and then I mark the hole in the hood and some small folds on the tunic. Next step is the wings. I take a blob of putty and start defining the general shape first. Don't be afraid of checking some reference to see if you are on the right track. Once I'm satisfied, it's time to start detailing. I like using a tool I grabbed myself out of another tool from a kit that I didn't like. This is something I recommend everyone do. Making your old tools is the best way of getting exactly what you need. Sculpting the feathers themselves was tricky, but I'm pleased with the results. To finish the chest angel, it's time to sculpt the arms and sword. As the patty is fully cured underneath, we can shape and trim without worrying about destroying our hard work. Note also that I completely changed the belt. I literally ripped off the previous sculpt and did a new one that I'm way more happy with. You can see me adding the final touch here as well, in the shape of a gem inside the little bezel in the middle. Some of you may not know that I actually used to work as a miniature sculptor. That was actually my first paid job, and something I always hated doing back then was cloth. But I now realize that the hate came from the fact that I sucked at doing it. Over time though, I've grown to really enjoy it as my skills grew and my suckage dropped. This is the best piece of cloth I've done so far. You can see a full tutorial including some very nice tips, link in the description and the top right corner. After the cloth was done, just a couple of details left, like this simple feather, which I also made a video about, you know what all those are by now, and I decided to glue some extra details to his belt. A chapter master has to carry tons of stuff to battle, otherwise the other chapter masters make fun of him. The last piece I made was this cute little guy carrying his helmet. He comes from the Deathwing command squad, I just removed the sword and grinded the space for Lazarus' helmet with my micro motor. Due to how Lazarus is holding it though, I also had to sculpt the whole right side of the helmet alongside new arms for him. I also couldn't resist doing the smallest lion symbol on the forehead of the helmet, because if I didn't, everyone was going to point it out. After almost two months of design, planning and build, Azrael is completely finished and I'm extremely proud of him. Initially I was going to just paint it as fast as possible to present something finished at the end of the video, but I think this is a competition level conversion and thus it deserves something better. Stay tuned for the final paint job in the near future. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget that if you like my videos and want to help make them, you can follow me on social media, you have the links to all my social media in the description below and in the pinned comment of this video. Share and like this video, but most importantly there is Patreon and channel members. Patreons and members allow me to do all the cool videos that I want to make and most importantly they allow me to release them all for free here on YouTube. Perks include access to an amazing Discord community full of lovely people, early access to some of the videos and now also private one-on-one -on -one online tutorings. You have to tier options there, 45 minutes and 3 hours a month. They are feeling fast, so if you want to have a private tutorial with me, don't hesitate and join now. Help me and my family enjoy the list of the coolest persons in the planet, including Kieros Kuris, Giovanni Constanza, Martin Pasco, Alejandro Maldonado Fuentes, Terry Denham, Robert Smith, Tyrannosaur, Heather Amstead, Greg Osborne, Howard Hotville, Chris Gothenthal, Carlos Rivera, Thomas Ustergaard, Javi Mota, Matt Arkinson, Christoph Moret, Victor Dolmen, Nicholas Fornell, Brendan Smith, Alfredo Phillips, Tim Muchida, Stephanie Owl, Nick DeMau, David Sutherland, Royal Nilsson, Tasted, Oscar Jonathan Thunberg, Dan Michael, Cristalio, Jimmy Milligan, Kevin Meanders, Farrar, Chris Fivey, Nadius Maximus, Aaron Dell, Garvey Smith, Mark Jarvis, Joe Simpson, Charles Armintas, G Force, Dr. V, Lena Lindemann, Kieran Muthair, and Kevin Sulas. And as for me, I will catch you in the next one. Bye.
So I'd say what we've got here is not really as gooey and sticky as a brownie might normally be. It is very nice. Well, okay, so that was a taste test. Let's just go back to the studio and reflect on what this is all about.